Yesterday, we had about a two-hour meeting talking about social justice issues. And what I'd like to say, first of all, is how proud I am of these young men that have come, come together, been able to talk about uh, all the different things, people able to uh, express each, each different belief that they all have. And, um it was a very emotional day for me. I think it was a, little, a very emotional day for everyone in this building because we, we held a team meeting you know, to discuss all the issues and guys who had been silent on the issues before had an opportunity to speak out. Everybody's got an opinion on this issue, whether they, you know, whether they voice it or not. I think the biggest thing that I remember thinking back to some of the team meetings was just the immediate willingness from everyone here on our team in this community to to want to help. Talking about it is the tough part for a lot of people. It makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Um, it all has to start with conversation. And that's not to say that's the solution, but at least that's a step in the right direction. We came together and for hours we were able to sit down and just talk as brothers and, and communicate to each other how we were feeling. There's a lot of guys that are very passionate about this and there's a lot of guys that want change. The epicenter and everything started, you know, really took off with George Floyd, which happened here in this city. And um, I know a lot of guys on this team, everyone really, are tired of it. I know I speak for a lot of the men behind me right now when I say we're sick to our stomachs. We're disgusted, you know, by the things that we're seeing, the lack of empathy that's been shown, the, the hijacking of narratives. It go, the list goes on and on. And uh, sometimes it can feel hopeless, and you, we can feel helpless as athletes sometimes in this place that we are right now as a country. As our first recipient, we wanted to jump on the call with you tonight. Just seeing you is putting a smile on, on, on my face. Just a huge congratulations to you. Um, very well deserved. Thank you for being an inspiration uh, to someone like myself. And as a team and as an organization, we're doing everything we can to build sustainable programs that will help the long-term effects of the lack of economic prominence in low-income areas, the lack of mental health support in some of these areas. You got a check for $250,000. <laughs> That's big time. We are doing everything we can, but now it's on the bureaucratic system to also meet our intensity, to meet our level of what we're demanding. Because it only goes so far, it's a two-way street. We can do what we can, do what we can with the finances and the resources we have, but we need the politicians, we need the government officials, the bureaucratic system, like I spoke to, to stand up and be leaders. We just want to let everybody know that we're doing our part. We're having those discussions every day in the locker room, different backgrounds. We're trying to bridge the gap, getting to know each other better, getting to know our community better. And we need each person at home to try to impact one life. If we can do that, change perspectives, get to know each other better, learn to treat each other as human, and see each other as individual people and our uniqueness, then we can one day accept each other and we'll be halfway closer to our goal. You've got 80 guys plus the coaches here that come together every single day, come from different backgrounds, different walks of life, but we have one common goal and we work towards that goal each and every day. We want to be an example of what things can be like. We want to be an example of what our society can look to and where we want to go. But we also want to be at the forefront of change. It says it on the board behind me, be the change. And each and every day, just like we come to work to win a championship, we got to go out in this society and be the change. And it's not going to change overnight. I think it was important because one thing we talked about was how the locker room reflects society. These are your Minnesota Vikings. Hey, bring it up, bring it up. Let's go, bring it up. Hey, let's go. Hey, get that look right now. Yeah. Get that look right now. Yeah. Lean on your brother, man. Lean on your brother. Look at that guy beside you and tell him you got him. I got you. I got you. Tell that boy I got you and lean on that and stand on it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, hey, brothers on three. Brothers on three. One, two, three. People from all over different backgrounds, different economic backgrounds, different races. We all come together for one common goal. There's a lot of people watching. Keep your head high, man. Keep your head high, you feel me? Even though we're all from different places, we all may have different opinions, we all still find some middle ground to come together. And I think it was important to display that.
So I feel like it happens a lot easier in, in, in the locker room setting. It's important for us to go into our daily lives and, and continue to be as vulnerable, continue to you know, listen to other people, um, take op people's opinions into account, whether they're gonna be like yours or not. For me, it felt very empowering. We were able to come out there together and stand behind a cause and, and a voice that we have and use it. Knowing that there's other guys in the locker room who truly do care, and just knowing you're not alone, I think it gives you some reassurance that, you know, everything's gonna be all right and you can make it through. It's good to, to feel um, and to know that, that the ownership and the, the team, they're not trying to suppress our voices, they're actually trying to um, uplift them and to broadcast them. To have that support has been important and it makes players more willing to speak out knowing that they have that support. It's not just the George Floyd murder. Change in this country needed to be made a long time ago. And you continually see the tragedies that are happening out there. And uh, I think it's our responsibility and our players' responsibility um, to try to make the changes so desperately needed in this country. We're the most watched sport in the country. Everyone wants to know what we're doing. Everyone wants to know how we train. Everyone knows, wants to know our opinion on something or what's going on in the locker room. And I think it's a good opportunity for us to bring light to a lot of the issues that have been plaguing our country. To perform the national anthem. Hey, make some happen. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sounds of blackness. The message that we have um, internally is that we don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. And that's the most important thing for us is not letting this divide us in any type of way. How can we um, come together and express what we're all feeling while getting through the people, um, being understanding, not coming across as disrespectful? And I think ultimately we all came down and we said, you know, regardless of what we may decide, there's always going to be some people who don't quite understand the message. A few years back, I feel like there was a lot of uh, of controversy with that, you know, but understanding why um, going forward is going to be important. Obviously, kneeling a few years ago was the worst thing you could do and terrible and, oh, he disrespecting the flag and the military. And now if you don't kneel, it's like, oh, he doesn't care about social injustice, doesn't care about social causes. Why is he standing for the flag? So it's like it's either one extreme or the other. You're disrespecting the flag, the men who died in war previously who fought for that flag. Um, there were also black, you know, soldiers who fought and died in those wars, you know, but when they came home, they were still treated as second-class citizens. What I feel is not going to be what he feels, not going to be what he feels. Maybe it is, and that's great, but if it is not, I don't think you need to be alienated for whatever you decide to do. If it's right within you, then it's the right thing to do, in my opinion. There's nothing in our locker room that could create division. If you stood with your hand over your heart, um, if you stood locked arms with teammates, if you took a knee, no matter what you choose, you're, you're not wrong. We support you and, and we're here for you as teammates. Love you too, man. I'm proud of my players. You know, ever since we've come in here, um, we've brought the right types of players in. the way they uh, handle themselves, whether it's on the field or off the field or in social justice issues or working together as a, as a team. You know, I'm, I'm very fortunate that we have a lot of guys that care about one another as much as they do and care about the community and the state and, and really the nation as much as they do. In my mind, I didn't believe that I had the, um, the right, I guess you could say, uh, to speak up and speak out. You know, they're not always sure that they're the ones to say it. You know, everyone's waiting for a leader, you know, but um, everyone's a leader. It really just takes that one person to step out and do something in front of everyone else to be that leader. Whether it's role model or this, I'm not looking to be that. I'm just looking to do the right thing, in my opinion. And I think doing the right thing is being present and being vocal and speaking for the voiceless. And that's kind of my approach to it. That's the type of men that are a part of this organization. Uh, you have a bunch of men that want to 
make a difference, that want to leave this community better than when they came, uh, or want to make the place that they came from better than when they left. I've been able to understand how important it is for me to speak up and speak out and use my platform. We're not going to eliminate white supremacy and racism ourselves in one day. If that was the case, you know, that way it would have been done years ago. That's the biggest thing I've learned is it's not an overnight thing, man. It's not a one day thing or a one week thing or a one year thing. You know, it's a it's a lifetime commitment. It's going to be an ongoing effort. It's going to it's not going to be easy. Um, but we got to continue to have these conversations. We got to continue to put the difficult uh, conversations um, at the forefront. We all need to come together in order for this change to happen. So yeah, I'm gonna use my platform and continue to use my platform.